Okay, so this has been by far my most suggested video over the last few weeks, and I thought I'd just go ahead and cover it real quickly. We're going to talk about Missouri football, what I think of the season so far, and how they have sort of risen up. Not many people probably would have picked Mizzou to be third in the SEC East at this point in the season, as they were projected to be sixth in the preseason polls and rankings, and they actually have a chance to finish second, which is just mind-boggling. Many people were really high on Tennessee, which we all knew would be a letdown. Kentucky was really praised, I wasn't super sold on them, and South Carolina had more hype than Missouri, but as you can all tell, South Carolina was nothing special. Elijah Dreams was questioned, he was ranked the 13th best coach in the SEC going into the year. A lot of people were kind of skeptical of the hire, and they kind of said he didn't really belong in the SEC. He's proving that he wants to win, and he's proving otherwise. Nick Bolton is the best linebacker in college football, and no one can change my mind on that. You can say Micah Parsons has more potential, maybe Dylan Moses, but Nick Bolton is the best linebacker in college football, and he's an absolute star. Joshua Bledsoe, Tyree Gillespie, and Kobe Whiteside are all NFL guys, and all four of those guys were seen as people who were going to anchor this defense that was supposed to be the strength of this year's squad. Ennis Rakestraw was the only freshman with a ton of hype going into the year, and he so far has played really well. No one really knew what to make of the wide receiver situation. They did get Damon Hazleton and Kiki Chisholm as graduate transfers, and then Jalen Knox was supposed to be probably the best player coming back. Cam Scott went into the transfer portal, and so did Maurice Massey. Larry Roundtree and Tyler Beatty were supposed to be the best running backs on the team, and so far they have proven that, and Roundtree has been an absolute beast. Sean Robinson was supposed to be the guy at quarterback, but he played pretty bad against Alabama, and he just doesn't fit the schemes that Missouri's trying to run, and it shows as Brady Cook is now the backup quarterback to him, and I wish Sean Robinson the best of luck, as he will probably enter the transfer portal pretty soon, or after this year. Missouri didn't look good at all against Alabama, they looked outmatched, they looked lost in the field, and they just didn't look very good, and I was pretty concerned that they were going to be really bad. Not a lot changed week two when they went on the road to Tennessee, they looked flat, they didn't look that good, but we saw the future. Connor Bazelak has been insanely good at quarterback, and he showed that he was going to be the guy moving forward, and now Missouri finally had a quarterback to look to. The LSU game was a major turning point. You can say all you want. LSU has a lot more talent than Mizzou, and a lot more talent than all but two schools in the SEC win the game more. That was massive, as that was his first win, and he got a signature win in his first game, and he had the same amount of ranked wins as Barry Odom in three games. Sorry, Barry Odom. One thing I really like about Drinkwitz is that he's showing he's going to play the hardest working guys. The wide receiver is a good example. Barrett Bannister, Toski Dove, Deontay Smith, and Micah Wilson have all gotten significant snaps and reps at wide receiver, and really no one thought those guys were going to be doing a whole lot this year, especially a guy like Toski Dove or Deontay Smith, as Smith was a walk-on and Dove was a two-star recruit. Larry Roundtree has been spectacular. He has six touchdowns in the last two games, he broke the all-time rushing record for a Missouri running back, and he's going to be a good player in the NFL someday whether he's drafted high or not. He's really taken over, he's embraced being a senior, and he's embraced the new culture at Mizzou, and he's just such a good player. They play against Kentucky, and that game was alright. They didn't look good on either side of the ball, but at the end of the day, they won that game, and under Barry Odom, Mizzou would have lost. They could never win a game like that. If it came down to a sludge fest or it came down to a close game, Barry Odom always lost those games. Drink was finally proved in one of those games he could win and grind it out. Florida, that was a tough game to watch. The brawl at halftime was not very good, but I expected Missouri to lose that game, and it was a good learning experience for all the players. The team plays with so much swag and fun. They're all dialed up on third down, they're all jumping around, and they're all supporting each other. I know when a Kentucky player got drilled on the sideline, the whole team surrounded them, and they're just having fun. Under Barry Odom, that didn't happen. Harrison Mevis has been spectacular kicker. Tucker McCann was alright, and Andrew Baggett was inconsistent at times, but Harrison Mevis has looked good, he looks reliable, and he looks like he's going to be one of the best kickers in Missouri history, if not the best one, and that showed this past weekend with his poise against Arkansas. COVID ended up delaying things and made it really annoying for a little while during the season, but their first game back was against South Carolina, and this was the first week after Muschamp was fired, so Mike Bobo did things a little bit differently, and that's the kind of game that Barry Odom would have lost in the past, but Missouri grinded it out in 117-10 and made a late game stop. Again, not the best performance, but they would have lost that game in other years. Vanderbilt was their most complete game they played, as they didn't punt once and they shut out Vanderbilt and they ignored all the distractions that were going on with the kicking situation. Arkansas was their most impressive game of the year though, as they didn't give up, as they were punched in the mouth in the second half and it looked like Arkansas was going to take control, but they fought back and showed they could win a comeback game. There was a stupid two-point conversion that I don't know how they converted, but Mizzou knew they were going to win the game, drove down the field, made it happen, and hit the game-winning kick, and the rest is history. Connor Bazelak has showed so much poise this year, and he has showed so much potential, and he's going to be such a good player. Larry Roundtree is playing out of his mind and is the best running back in school history, and he has really stepped his game up over the last few weeks. Toski Dove and Kiki Chisholm are starting to separate themselves from everyone else, and it seems like those two are Connor Bazelak's favorite two targets, and Jalen Knox is also in there as well. 
One thing I was really surprised about is the lack of playing time these freshmen have gotten. JJ Hester, Chance Looper, Jay Macklin, and Chris Abrams Drain were all pretty highly recruited, and they were pretty good players, I thought, but they haven't really played so far this year, sometimes on special teams, but there just hasn't been a lot of these young guys playing, and that can be a good or a bad sign. I personally think it's a good sign because it shows that the other players are stepping up, and it shows these young guys are going to have more time to learn and get better. I haven't seen a whole lot of Elijah Young. He was probably the second most hyped up recruit coming into the class. He's looked pretty good when he's played, and he's definitely shown some potential, but when Larry Roundtree leaves, Beatty will step in, and Elijah Young will probably be the backup running back, so hopefully he does big things and is a good player. The biggest thing that's been different about Missouri football this year is that Drinkwitz wants and expects to win every single game. He said they weren't underdogs against LSU, and I guarantee you he didn't say they were underdogs against Arkansas, and I guarantee you he didn't think he was an underdog against Florida. When they play Georgia this weekend, Drinkwitz will expect to win. He has a no-nonsense approach, and that is showing in some of the off-the-field stuff. We've seen a few kids transfer and opt out, and it's because they're not buying into what Drinkwitz wants to do. If a kid wants to opt out, he's just basically saying your spot's not there, and we don't need you right now. It is kind of a harsh approach, but that's the way I like it. Mizzou wants to win now, Drinkwitz isn't worried about this being a COVID year, he wants to win and establish himself right now, and Mizzou football is just fun again. Barry Odom was so boring, I expected to lose every big game, I expected us to fall off in the fourth quarter, and I expected us to always lose those 50-50 games, but Drinkwitz, he wins them. I was never confident in the offense when they were down in the Barry Odom era, but now with what Bayslack did last week, I'm confident that Missouri's going to win these games. I'm so pumped to see what's going to happen. Recruits are buying in. They just landed a four-star recruit out of St. Louis. And they also got a former four-star offensive lineman from Oklahoma. And things are just on the uptick. Missouri is winning games, and they're having a great time doing it. Connor Bazelot could be the best quarterback in school history. Yes, I know we had Drew Locke. And I know we had James Franklin. And I know we had Brad Smith. But I do think Bazelot will be the best quarterback in Missouri history when things are all said and done. And good times are happening right now. And they are on the horizon in Missouri. And I've been so impressed with Drinkwitz. And I give him an A-plus for what he has done so far. I'm going to make a video grading all the coaching hires and how they did. And this guy right now is doing better than most first-year coaches, especially during a COVID year, especially from never having an SEC caliber job, and especially having to put this team together in the time he had. I'm super pumped for Mizzou football. I hope we beat Georgia this weekend. And I'm just so happy with what's going on right now. And I think good times are ahead. If you're a Missouri fan like I am, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I typically cover the Tigers better than any other team on my YouTube channel. I made videos about Connor Bazelak. I made videos about Drew Locke, Matty Mock, Alden Smith, Blaine Gabbert, Doriel Reed Beckham. You name it, I've made it. Check out my playlist of all my Mizzou videos. Subscribe to the channel if you're a Mizzou fan. And I'll see you guys again soon. But until next time, peace.